Okay. This is my first video for 2012 for my garden. And it is still only February. I live in Florida, in Central Florida, so um, we really didn't have a winter. Not really. Um, we had a, like two days of barely freezing, which was enough to bother some plants, but not enough to kill them, and they just needed some work done to them, so I've been busy thinning them out and taking out the old and and most importantly getting ready for the new stuff. Um, I'm real excited about it. It's, it's going to be a challenge this year though because I have a, a back injury so me walking is very painful um, but I think that going out doing this is actually good for me and because laying in the bed where it's more comfortable is not necessarily the best thing for me so <laughs> That being said, um, talk to you a little bit about what's going on here. These are some tomatoes that I planted late in the season last year. They are two types of tomato. This is the the red brandy wine, and this is a Rector tomato. Oh. And uh, I guess I planted them in November. 2011, and then I ended up uh, going up north with my husband for, gosh, two months. I left the first of December and got home just a couple weeks ago. So my dad's taking care of them best he could, and and uh, I've been doing you know a lot of work. He's making sure that they didn't die, and watered them and fed them, and and now I'm I'm here. So. You know, I saved what I could and and got rid of what I couldn't. Like, for example, let me show you this one here. This little guy here. <laughs> He's about gone. That, that whole plant will be gone, but that one tomato's still growing. So, we'll let that grow out and then I will pull that up. And Not a big deal, though, because I've got new ones coming. So, somebody will be glad to own that steak. Um... As you can see, I have another brandy wine next to it. The, the problem is with these, you see this bottom part? I have no idea why it has this surface like that. Somebody knows. I'd love to know. Let me know. <laughs> I'm very new at this. Um, last year was my first year to um, attempt anything. And uh, mostly what I grew were little um, the grape tomatoes I cannot remember the exact strain of them or breed of them name of them whatever but I know the grape tomatoes I'll show you what I have left of those in a second but these are I want to show you these um, another little record tomato down there I think they're so cute so and then underneath this I put this thing here to keep people from walking on it until I can get a kind of little fencing to put up thinking about putting a row of lettuce in front of there and no I've never grown lettuce so um, that'll be a fun thing to try um okay here is what's left of my my tomatoes my babies I had so many of these last year that I I ate, had as many as I wanted and my parents had as many as they wanted we took them to church and gave them to people at church and uh, they were just, as you can see, they're still they're just happy little things, <laughs> you know. So this thing about uh, tomatoes growing for a year and they're done, well that's not necessarily true when you live in Central Florida. So what I do is, let me see if I can give you an example. I have a new growth. Um, I just trimmed these back, so I probably don't even have any to show you. No. That's a dead one. Um, ah, okay, right here. There's a growth there. I don't know what you technical terms. But if I were to let that get a little bigger, 
and pull it off. I stick it in the dirt and it'll grow. And so I don't have to really grow these from seed. I just put them in the dirt and sometimes on my blogs. Hopefully I will show you what I exactly mean. But So I have kept these going by doing that. Um, there are, come down here. I originally had them all um, in these little buckets from Home Depot. And my husband, I stole his fishing poles because in the beginning I had no idea. I just I knew I had a bunch of tomatoes out of control that needed some kind of stability. Fishing poles work wonders, but you may be in the divorce court, so be careful about those fishing poles. Um, and here's another one. When I had came back from my trip, the all the ones in buckets were pretty much dead. These two showed quite a bit of life at the bottom. And I thought, hmm. So I cleaned them all up and I had not really done anything to them since I'd been home but water them and and once a week I'll throw some miracle growth feeder on them. And they are gonna be okay. So I have those. Well, that's it for my tomatoes. Um, I am in the process of, like I said, cleaning up and getting ready for the new growing year. So all these buckets, um, they're going to be washing, up, washing them out really good with some bleach water. Um, it's a little cool today, so I'm going to wait till a nice warmer day. Uh, cool. <laughs> okay, it's in the 60s, so those of you up north, sorry, that's our cool. Um, but in a day or two, it'll be back in the 80s, so I'll uh, get those cleaned up. Wash, since those are some more tomato steaks, uh, what do you call those? Cages. Get them washed up. Um, I got a little supply of this, that, and the other back here bamboo poles and mini trellises and wooden stakes and stuff. And then over here, a black fencing. Uh, last year I tried to grow zucchini and squash, and something just trampled them to death. I don't know what it was, but I know that this year I need to try to protect them. So I'm going to be trying to grow a, a raised, or grow, grow in a raised bed. Went to, again, Home Depot and got some landscape tempers. Uh, an old friend from high school told me about them and I went and got some. So we're going to build the boxes and see if I can't put some kind of cage around it with that fencing there. But I have my little pots that I got for some herbs. And the tray goes to a window tray. And right in this one right now, um, that's all dillweed an herb. And this box is a mix of flowers. Lavender, pink lavender, purple lavender, baby's breath, and some kind of wildflower. I probably shouldn't have put the wildflower in there, but this is um, my concoction for attracting bees this year because, um, so that they come and they visit my all my plants and help pollinate them so that I don't have to get out there and pretend like I'm a bee and shake the plants. <laughs> so um, that's what I got going on here. Let me show you real quick. I have my supplies are kind of in here that I'm working with. And this is my mix for starting my seeds. It's in there. You can't really use, I found this out the hard way, not knowing what I'm doing, the garden soil is not good for starting seeds because you put your seeds in there and you add water and you've created a, um, a mud bath and those poor little seeds have no way of, <laughs> it's just too heavy. They're down underneath there, they're, it's heavy, it's mucky, it's yucky and only the strong survive and um, yeah, that's not too many. So the garden soil is after you have little sprouts you want to transplant them into your garden, you use that. But until then, 
you use this. Um, that's really lightweight. And it even tells you all on there that it, that, you know, need to make a, I'm sure there is one, a book for dummies for growing seeds. This is the very first thing it should say. <laughs> Buy stuff like this, not like that. You know, I have aluminum cans everywhere. My dad collects them, it's his little hobby. And, uh, the grandkids come over and they pick them up and put them in his little barrel. But, I don't know if you can see it, all the bees on them. Sometimes I think, why am I growing flowers? I can just throw <laughs> aluminum cans in my garden, but no, I'm just kidding, I don't want to do that. But yeah, there's a lot of bees. And real quick before I finish, I'll show you a couple more things. My nephew, Nicholas, came over. I paid him to dig all the grass out of the spot. Because this is where the raised beds are going to go. Um, we'll probably start over here with the first one. And I got some ideas and different things for trellises or whatever if I want to add. Um, I'm really excited to get this going. I, like I said, I just really worry about my back giving out and hopefully that doesn't happen. Here's my windowsill that I've chosen to start little seedlings. This belongs to my kitty cat. This is cat grass. He loves cat grass. Oh my gosh. When I go out in the garden and I come in and I don't bring some grass with me, he feels like he's been, you know, like a kid who's expecting a toy and their mommy didn't bring him one. Yeah, that's my cat when I don't bring him some grass. But I thought about it this year. There's some cat grass there for him. So anyway, this is, uh, this year I've got some peppers started. I've never done peppers before, so and they're not blooming out very good yet, so hopefully they're just late starters, but I really may not know what I'm doing. And the ones that are blooming, Black Beauty Zucchini, Summer Squash, Roma Tomatoes, and Beefsteak Tomatoes. Yeah, I'm pretty good at some tomatoes now. If I can keep the critters off the zucchini and the squash, um, that's what my first raised bed's going to be for. Those little babies right there. So, well, that's about it. Um, at my mom and dad's, so it's not much room. It's not like I can go out and just, you know, take up all the room. Dad has graciously allowed me to do these back here because he says, sure, no problem. That's less grass that I have to cut. <laughs> but uh, I will give you an update soon. Bye.